Hello and welcome back to a Game of Thrones mod for Crusader Kings 2. So, last time we had some unfortunate things with Uther Tyrell and him randomly dying because of that bugged event. So that's uh, interesting, but we're going to continue reaving this time, we're going to move on. Courtiers will die, and uh, if they do, we can, just create, we can create more, we can uh, do all sorts of things. We have a lot of them still available, so we're going to speed it up, and we're going to do some reaving events. Now, interestingly, I have actually done this next year. I, 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 I played through it. But, uh, yeah, the uh, game crashed on the first uh, save, which was unfortunate. So we can imprison Talia. What's she trying to do? She's trying to kill Aegor the Warrior. Now, I can't remember. We are not friends of Aegor. So that happened in the year that uh, stopped. So we're still probably not on. It's probably not on to, impri like, to try and kill him. But we are a bit slothful. And uh, what would we do? I think we would probably just, um, we probably wouldn't get involved in plotting at all from an intrigue standpoint. So it'd be whatever Agor would be wanting to do. And Agor would probably tell us, he would probably advise us to imprison the person because, well, you know, it's, she's trying to kill him. She's married to Rakaro. Okay, we'll try and imprison her. The council votes yes for this. All eight people in the council are with it. And some of them are voting with it because they're returning favors to Aegor the Warrior. Yeah. Let's uh, do it. Talia has... Oh, Talia has been locked away in my dungeon awaiting her fate. Well... Oh. Let's uh, call her for a trial after this event. After a hard day's reaving, the men are having many a strong drink whilst at rest at anchor. Another reaver is bragging of the many men he has killed this day and how he is the boldest of the Ironborn here. My companions think I should challenge him to a finger dance to prove otherwise. I'm the boldest, I challenge him. Despite all his bravado, James Ironfoot proved himself a craven. He backed down from your challenge to a finger dance. I'm a true Ironborn. Right, uh, we're gonna let her rot, I think, in the dungeons for just now because we're about to hold a trial. Right, let's call a trial for Tala. See how it goes. Alla has demanded a trial before the court, which Warwick shall oversee to ensure justice is served. She begins to present her defense, and some decent arguments were made. Many in the court seem to sympathize with her. Warwick will interrogate her now. Warwick stood before the court and aggressively questioned the accused. Many at court were convinced by his arguments, but then again, many were seemed unimpressed. He made a reasonable case. A verdict has been reached. Warwick proclaims Tala is guilty. The council will lawfully decide the punishment, or I'll be the better people and release her. Let's let the council decide the punishment. I've not... This is a new thing. What did they decide? Uh, Mern Peak Vesuv refused to sell a favour to Mern Gardner. Interesting. Um, that beats Hala is... Rakaro's wife. She's still imprisoned. Okay. Well, let's see what the council comes back with. A son was born to Laios and Megan named Giles. Um, she's still just imprisoned. Okay, we could exile her or something, but I want to see what the council will decide that we're going to do. Uh, Justin Benson has been come to be a great companion. We've raided and pillaged together. We've slain many men in battle side by side. Feasted together in celebration of reaving well done in the true spirit of the Iron God. Yes. Uh, I'm also very quickly going to change. That's not what I wanted to do. I want to go into game options. I just want to change our autosave to be half yearly. Um, just in case, you know, we have another crash. We might switch it back to yearly in a bit, but that's fine. Prince Harry in the Black has the, declared his invasion of the Fist of the First Men. Which he's trying to get, he's getting a lot of land beyond the wall. I wouldn't be surprised if we became king beyond the wall. My liege, I've tried to make Master Dagon of Cod Hall realize what benevolent and peaceful ruler you truly are. But uh, since the forces at his court have been hard at work to discredit every move and uh, distort my every word, I'm afraid that I'll end this visit. I'm afraid that in the end, this visit seems to have done more harm than good. Your humble just guard, Lannis Hasterton. That's not good, Lannis. Aegor River's decision to attack a merchant fleet was sound. The fleet was fairly well defended. We lost a few men seizing their ships, as well as taking some damage to our longships. But in the end, no one can resist our Ironborn Reavers, and much cargo, as well as many captives, were taken. A price well paid. James Ironfoot has proved himself worthy to be called, called Ironborn as he has captured himself a salt wife. Okay, we have uh, Telia, who's a salt wife. Ooh, that's got his own little uh, trait. Uh, ambitious, proud, and deceitful. 
Oh, also, um, she had a different religion. What religion was that? That is... Moonsingers. And uh, that's, that's pretty far away. That's probably where we're weaving, to be honest. If I had to take a stab in the dark. Right. Uh, people are being released from Harren the Black's dungeon. My lord, thank you for having me in your household these past years. I must have a higher purpose now. Lord Reaver Vikrin has accepted me into his service and I shall leave for Pike immediately. Yours, Regal. He has taken the position of captain of the fleet at Pike. It's interesting because I thought that's what Malus Blackfire had. I think it was. Yeah, now he's uh, Sworn Shield. Well, good luck. Um, we have a new title. We have a new space for a Sworn Shield. Uh, a new bodyguard. We will choose it based on Marshall again. Mayford Mack seems to be the uh, obvious choice. Yep, he is a knight, he's a reaver. You know, you'll be our bodyguard. If my opinion ruled, the world would be a much more chaotic but fun place. If I keep following the laws, the world would have less chaos but also be less fun. Hmm, do we think we're more of an arbitrary or just person? I think we'd like the world to be um, a little bit more fun. Yeah, I think we could be arbitrary. Um, although we didn't get it anyway, but that's fine. Oh! That was a loud scream. Uh, Warwick Westford died under suspicious circumstances. Somebody murdered him. Someone's been murdering a lot of people in our court. Interesting. He's no longer regent for Lord Urus. He's no longer treasurer for Lord Urus. A leisure wisdom mercy a legendary. I've been apportioned. No, he's not. He's dead. I'm afraid. Okay. Warwick had made me a promise that I would bury him properly. I'd made me promise I would bury him properly. I kept my promises. I walked beside his coffin to Warwick's last rest, and the wailing of the mourners was almost more than I could bear. He died too young. Hmm. Um. We're, we'll be sincere. Valor Morgulis. My liege, peace be with you. I've been appointed as your regent. So now Dinald Fire is our regent. Interesting. I wonder if he was the one who killed him. We can righteously imprison Fernie. Why? What did she do? It, it doesn't say. Okay. Oh. Dishonorable. She did something dishonorable. Like, it's a solved problems through assassination. So it's a high chance that Fernie was the one who killed, um, who killed Warwick. So, yeah, known murder. And that just popped up. So she killed Warwick. Uh, we need a new treasurer. Um, we're going to put in probably Arwen. That seems reasonable. She's really good at stewardship. Although, we do have Ronald who wants to be a treasurer and she, he is in the, uh, he is one of the courtiers who was created. So we'll put him in instead. Um, yes. And we'll go and collect taxes with him. Right. I guess we should imprison Fernie. She is married to Ronald Estimant. We will imprison, um, her. The only person voting against it is Ronald, and that makes a lot of sense. Family member would be affected ne negatively. Like how it says, um, it tells you why. Yeah. It, it, it tells you why they're voting for these things. Yeah, a lot of them are just voting because they dislike the character. Okay. Yeah. And one's voting because they have a favour they owe to Lannis Hasterton. Well, we'll do it. Fernie is now locked away in my dungeon, awaiting her fate. Well, I guess, since we know that she's a murderer, we don't need to hold the trial. Oh, we still have Tala in our dungeon. She never got re uh, released or executed. Uh, execution will cost you 20 piety if we do it, or exile her. I suppose we should exile her? That makes the most sense to her. Uh, I don't think we're probably... I don't think we're going to sell her into slavery. That seems a little bit off. Or enslave her ourselves. That doesn't seem very good. Hmm... I mean, we could enslave her ourselves as an option, although we get tyranny for that, so that says it's not a thing that we can do without any penalty. We'll just uh, exile her. That's fine. The council didn't vote for anything. That's fine. We banished her. Um, does that mean, did her husband go with her? Uh, was that Rakaro? No. But he is, she is in Lord Ragnar of Seaskin Points, uh, Sealskin Points, uh, like, court, which he is part of Great Wick. Yeah. Okay, cool. Next one, we have Fernie. She has just executed... She has just uh, killed Warwick. So what are we going to do with him? We can execute her. And it's a valid reason. She would vote against it, but that's fine. We can exile her. I think we're going to execute her. Yep. She is gone. We'll see how that plays out. 
Yeah. I kind of like doing the trials more, because they give you, like, a, uh... They're meant to give you a verdict. But, anyway. Uh, one of my fellow reavers has come to be a great companion. We have raided and pillaged together, and we have slain many a man in battle side by side, and feasted together in celebration of reaving well done. In the true spirit of the drowned god. We become friends with Agor. Cool. Agor River's decision to attack a fishing village produced a fight that was hard fought and a few of our men were lost, but none can withstand the might of the Ironborn and we have claimed our iron price today, winning our plunder from these weak people. Okay, cool. That's uh, going well. The reaving's going very well. We're getting a lot of money from that. We could start improving our holding. Oh. Um, at age 51, Valena Valerian died in the dungeons of King Mern the Ninth of the Reach. So that is... Yes in his dungeons. So she's married was married to Arian of Dragonstone, who was one of the counselors at the start of the uh, like start of the scenario, I suppose, right? Um yes, and no, he wasn't, but he was parent to uh yes, parent to Aegon. Okay, so that's Aegon's mother, effectively. Well, uh, as effectively and actually. Yes. Cool. Uh, I was thinking Valerian, as in there is a Valerian who is on the council at the start, but it's not him, because he's a Targaryen. Anyway. Aegir River's reaving has come to an end. We have returned across the narrow sea after getting much plunder and capturing many salt wives. We are true ironborn. Yes, fantastic. The Regency has ended, and we'll keep this going. People are... Uh, what was that one? Uh, the Peasants' Revolt was declared on Orkathar the Butcher. That's a very large revolt, very close to us. My courtier, Jonella, is not exerting herself in her studies. I am starting to despair. Jonella is married to Lannis Hasterton. Okay. Well, uh, she's just dense. What can I do? She gains slothful or we can pray for her soul. Well, I guess we're slothful as well, so she's going to be slothful. That's the kind of way I see it. Yeah, this Peasant's Revolt is going to win because it's 8,000 versus at max 7,000. And it would need Aegon to actually come over here and win it basically. And he's not going to do that because he's not technically part of the uh, Westeros bit just now because Aegon's in a war. And we're currently in the Meg War system. So, uh, yeah. That's not going to go well for them. What else have we got going on? Not too much. It's actually uh, quite peaceful. There is always a place at my table and a warm spot in front of the hearth for all the old men and women who have served me before and now have nowhere else to go. Their stories delight everyone. I see no need for them to be forgotten after long lives of hard work for me. Some courtiers think it's uh, good too. So Asha um, impresses. The kindness of Asha impress. No, the kindness of Lord Urus impress impresses. The kindness of Lord Urus impresses Asha. Yes. I almost blushed when Asha expressed her admiration over my generosity and kindness. Thank you for those kind words. Yeah, good. Glad to see that's going well. My lord, it has come to my attention nobody has been designated regent for salt. Let's should the realm need it. Needless to say, this is a perilous position, as surely squabble and rivalry will emerge without clear leadership. I only petition you name me as designated regent to avoid this sort of trouble. Signed, Lord James of House Ironfruit. Well, he seems like a logical person. He's uh, our only and most powerful vassal by uh, default, so yeah, he can do it. No reason for him not to. We will go out raiding, I just want to make sure the save uh, worked. So let's get some raiding going. Aaron the Black now controls a lot of land beyond the wall. He's got a reasonable sized uh, group there and he's going to probably go further. Right. Let's get some raiding going on. So, what do we need? Oh, we actually don't even have enough army levies to go raiding. So, never mind. We're going to just sit here and wait for our army levies to replenish. Um, we have children, so we have this guy on trained children instead of something like trained troops. But we also have someone else trying to get zeal, which works. Oh, we don't have Agor um, scheming. That's because he's one of our commanders. We should just have him scheming and have him not be a commander. That makes a little bit more sense. Right. Um, we'll have a new commander. So instead of Agor being our commander, we will have uh, Justin. Yeah, there we go. That works out. Uh, Civ of Antler Vale Wildling Revolt is declared a peasant's revolt on Harren the Black. Harren the Black's doing a lot of interesting stuff right now. Uh, Lord he Reaver at Harren the Black has, has created the High Lordship of the Lower Frostfangs. Interesting. He's now uh, kind of coming out of his wildling ways. He is disinherited but, and a tyrant, but he's uh, doing well for himself. Oh, a whole bunch of stuff happened. 
Raiders, uh, people being imprisoned. Okay, nothing too exciting, actually. Uh, King Torrin of the North has inherited the Lordship of Moat Callan from Master Rickon of Moat Callan. So he executed another Stark. That's not good. Um, oh, this is a new um, government type, Military Command. The territory is ruled by an appointed military commander chosen by the overlord of the territory. Interesting. Cool. Um, but yeah, he's now got Kinslayer and Tyrant. So he's uh, not looking good right now. How's Aegon's War going? Aegon's War is going in favour of it's going in favour of him by the fact that they had 85% war score and they have now lost it for the Reach. So Aegon will very soon take that over. Then maybe we'll come deal with these uh, revolts. Uh, Lauren Lannister is calling in some favours. Right. Who died? That's the death sound. Princess Maria of Dorne died a natural death and she was succeeded by no one we can see here. So let's go and have a look. Um, she was succeeded by Princess Emerly of Dorne, whose parents were uh, Nymor and Dowager Queen Ella of Dorne and her grandparent was Maria. Okay. A rather heated discussion between myself and the stable master caught Falsus' attention. After listening to us both, she settled the matter between me and the stable master in a fair way. I got the horse and the stable master got the coin. Ah, she was, pre she was the person previously married to Warwick. Good. Good. Impressive. A daughter was born to Lannis Haston and Jonella Spar named Raella. Oh, and she's uh, strong. That's the first uh, interesting trait we've had from a child. Right, uh, my liege, I read your bad news from Saltliff. My efforts to squeeze some extra taxes out of the population have been met with resistance and the peasants are arming themselves. I fear we may soon have a revolt in our hands. Uh, your humble steward, Dinald Fire. Uh, that's fine, because we have another revolt already there. Under my guidance, my young courtier, Jonella, is slowly mastering the art of swordsmanship. Oh, well done. Uh, people are being ransomed, uh, including Lord Simon of the Scourge. Great name. Uh, cattle has mysteriously disappeared from the herds all throughout my land. Luckily, my bailiff found the rustlers. The cattle has been returned. No sanction needed. This is, thievery is punished by cutting off the hands. Another day I would have spared their lives, not today. The coldest, darkest se cell is reserved for scum like this. Okay, what are we going to do about this? So... The castle has been returned, no sanction needed. That kind of appeals to my slothful side, and I think that's probably where we're going to go with this. Yeah, the rest seems like it would involve us actually doing work, so uh, we'll go for no sa uh, no sanction needed. In a little bit of piety, but that's fine. Queen Visenya of Westeros has usurped the High Lordship of Case from Lord Garrison of Feastfires, so she now controls all of Case. Which is quite interesting. She also, of course, has her alliance with her uh, spouse, Aegon, which means it's probably not going to be just instantly conquered back. So we'll see how that goes. Kyle of Whitecliff has served the Lordship of Pebble from Sir Oswald Pyre, or Pryor. Fate smiles upon me. My wife Arwen is pregnant once more. And uh, this will be our third child, right? Yes. Essence revolt in the first of the first men ended. Um, that's Quentin Sarliff has been released from someone's dungeon. Lyra was released from someone's dungeon. Um, raiders have arrived. Oh yes, we were going to go raiding. Do we have enough men yet? Not really. I'm thinking if we have about a thousand men, we'd go raiding. But with 200, it just doesn't seem worth it. Better to just let our men recharge a little bit. Janela seems very interested in the garments of some of that uh, some of the courtiers are wearing. Yet, not in a useful, lustful way. Jonella is also interested in the fabrics themselves, not just what's underneath them. Well, I suppose it's harmless, isn't it? Yeah, we're, we're, we're slothful. We're not really going to push it too much. We're not the best educator. The young Jonella seems to be developing very strong religious sentiments. Uh, do we think we want to get our zealous or kind, basically, is what this is asking. Um, I think kind is more what we would aim for. She should focus on helping others instead. Yeah. Oh, Acorn's Ridge, did they become independent? Uh, oh, they're attacking King Aegon of Westeros. Ah, so they, the Rock decided to stay independent. They were called in, decided to stay neutral. And then uh, this group decided to not go for their liege instead, attack against Aegon. Who is winning quite handily. He's doing it pretty well. If he just went to the capital, he'd probably win this straight away. Lauren Lannister's calling in 
a favor that he just bought this very second. Oh, important decision. We can offer a 200 ducat donation to our liege, or 200 gold donation. Um, no. Uh, as much as the offer uh, entices me, that seems like something I'm never going to do. My young courtier has finished her education in the intrigues of the court. It turned out less well than expected. Well, she was being educated by me, which probably wasn't the best thing, and she was going for an intrigue focus, which probably wasn't the best thing for, for me to be teaching her. So, yeah, she's not very uh, smart at all, actually. Very much like her educator. Terius died after a period of illness. Who was uh, they? Who were they? Chief Giant's invasion of the Fist of the First Men ended inconclusively. Giant Iberg became unlanded. Okay. Um, Terius... The unimportant is also Priest Pinto of Ferenus, who is not dead. Okay. Weird, but don't need to worry about that. The revolt against the rule of the Storm King Al uh, Argilac the Arrogant has ended, and he lost. Oh wait, he lost against the revolt, which means that he's no longer in charge. And it reverted to his daughter, Storm Queen Argella of the Stormlands, who's married to Boris of the Stormlands, Boris Cole. Uh, in a matrilineal marriage. Okay, cool. We have another daughter, Grisella. That's a fine name. That's, uh, yeah, good. Oh, I forgot to see, does she have any tr good traits? Oh, she got ugly. That's not a good trait. Not a good trait at all. I'm kind of waiting to see what uh, Aegon actually does. He took some more land up there, actually. He's in defending against Sea Lord Koklo in Bravos in the Bravosi uh, Westeros War for the city of Seltina. Or Seltina? I don't know. He's almost won his war uh, of emancipation. Right, and then he'll go back to his actual conquest wars, I believe. Yeah, I think it's if he's at war for Lord Paramount, he will not be able to call any more dragon conquests, but if he stops being at war for Lord Paramount, he can call them again. So I think that's where they're at there. Right. Uh, my liege, my mission to Pike so far has been a success. During my visit to the court of Lord Reaver Vicrin of Pike, I seem to have managed to make him understand what benevolent and peaceful ruler you really are, and he sends his regards. Your humble just car, Sir Lannis. Well, I think that's a good point to end the episode. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.